Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a highly requested video and that is Excel basics for accountants. Honestly, anybody could use what I'm about to show you for even like personal finances, like budgeting and stuff like that. Um, the example that I'm giving you is kind of budget related, but really you could use it as an accountant. So let's just go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I have two tabs. Um, if you see my arrow down here, I have a data tab and then I have a VLOOKUP tab. Um, and I apologize guys, this is really the only way that I was able to film this video. Um, hopefully it works, otherwise I'll have to look into other um, forms, but I know a lot of people have been asking for this so I wanted to go ahead and do it for you. So like I was saying, I have two tabs. The first tab is the tab that we're gonna focus on the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you guys in so you can see. So I think it looks okay. You guys should be able to see it here. Okay, so right now I have headers here and then I have a bunch of data down here. And I just, I just took some of this data from like an old credit card statement so it's nothing significant but I just wanted to use something as a basis for what I'm gonna show you. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys were very basic things, and then we'll get into some harder stuff. So the first thing I was gonna show you was sorting. And I'm gonna have to zoom you guys out a little bit because you're gonna need to see what I have here. So you see all the data here. I have dates, I have categories of spending, I have the store that I spent money at, and then I have the amount. Um, so what the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and sort. Um, to do that, you need to go to the data tab above and you choose sort. And this might look a di little different depending on what computer you're using. I have a Mac, so this is kind of what it looks like, but it's, it's the, same, the same type of um, situation. Really, it just might look a little different, but it's exact, it works exactly the same. Um, so at right here, um, all the way to the left, it says sort by, and there's a little drop down here, and you can choose date, category, store, amount. So all of the headers that you see over here, you can sort by those. So let's, for example, say that, you know, right now, the way that it is, the dates aren't sorted, you know, in order. So let's sort the dates in order. So you just select the date, you go okay, and you can see now all of the dates are in order. So starting with December 15th, all the way down, oh, and this wasn't fixed, sorry about that guys, I need to fix this. That was supposed to be 16. So we can just go ahead and resort, and it fixed it. So now you can see it starts December 15th and goes all the way down to January 1st, 2017. Um, you could change that up if you wanted to, oops, if you wanted to say, um, sort it by category, so you can have you know all your household spending together, all your groceries together, you can do that. You can see now all the gifts are together, groceries are together, um, and then restaurants are together. So that is really helpful. If It really doesn't matter so much when you have like a small list like I show here, but if you have like hundreds or even thousands rows of data, this comes in super handy. Um, the next thing I want to show you is kind of related and it has to do with filters. So again, I apologize for, you know, zooming in and out. Um, but this is going to be with filters. So it's under the same data tab that we just went to. And instead of going to sort, which you have here, you're gonna go to filter. And if you just noticed, it um, added little, little drop down arrows to everything. So for these, this is just another way of sorting. sorting. So let's say, for example, all we wanna see are gifts. You're gonna go ahead and unclick select all and just select gifts. And you can see it takes everything out and all you see now are the gifts up here. So it's just another way of sorting. Um, I use sort all the time, I use filter probably even more. Um, but yeah, and then once you want that to be once you want everything back, you can either select all again or you could do clear filter down there. Um, so yeah, that's two things that I really wanted to show you guys involving like sorting and kind of um, looking through data. 
All right, so now that I've shown you how to sort and filter, I wanna quickly show you guys a little bit about formulas. So there's a few ways that you can do formulas in Excel. Um, some, I'm sure you guys all know that there is a formulas tab right here. Um, but you could also just simply type in a formula. So for example, if I wanted to, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but um, the way that I normally do it is just to type it in. So um, for example, let's say I wanted to know the total amount of all of what I bought during this time. I would just do equals sum and then select all of the data that I want to sum. And you can see the total is $290.26. If you did not want to do it that way, and let's say you're not sure about what the exact formula is, the other thing that you can do is just go to formulas, and then there's a bunch of different formulas. There's recently used, financial, um, logical, text, time and date, look up and reference, math and trick, and more. Um, I know that for sure I've used the sum before, so I could use, go to my recently used and use sum. And you can see when you do this, it selects all of the data that you're close by. Um, and so all you really have to do is do enter or return. And you can see I get the same amount, $290.26. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have used um, sum before, but really if there's any equations that you're looking for, Really, you could find them in one of these here, or if you're not sure, you could always Google it um, and find what the exact equation or whatever is. So that is definitely one of the things that I wanted to show you. That's a very basic idea, but if you're not using Excel very often, maybe it's not basic. Um, so then there's three other things that I wanted to show you guys. The first thing is subtotals. And I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but this is definitely something that I use quite a bit in my job right now. Um, to do that, you have to do a couple steps beforehand. Um, so the first step that you need to do is you need to select the data and sort. So what we did before. Um, and you need to sort by what you want to subtotal. So in this example, I'm going to, I want to subtotal my categories to see how much I'm spending every month in these categories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by category, say OK. And again, you can see all of the categories, um, all of the transactions are together. So all the restaurants are together, gifts are together. Um, then again, you're going to select all the data and you're going to be in the data tab and then go all the way over um, and you'll see that subtotal little icon right here. You're gonna go ahead and select that. Sorry for the, hopefully this is not too annoying to wash. Oh, and that's my dryer. So we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, so now this is kind of what you'll see when you select that subtotal um, icon. So you'll see subtotal up here and then it says at each change in and that's where you get to select um, what you want to subtotal by. That's kind of confusing. I don't know why it doesn't say something else, but in this example, again, we want to sort by category. So we're going to go ahead and say category. We want it to sum up. So we want it to add all the category um, items together and then you can, you can add a subtotal, which is like to get the total amount of all of these, but really it doesn't make sense to do it for anything but amount because how could you sum, you know, how could you add together stores? Um, so in other spreadsheets, you might have like multiple amount um, columns, but in this situation, it would just make sense to do amount. And one thing I wanted to point out is if you want to do multiple um, subtotals, which I do quite a bit, when you do the second subtotal, you need to make sure that you unclick this replace current subtotals. Otherwise, it completely removes your past subtotal and only has the new one. So make sure you do that if you're doing a, if you're trying to do two subtotals at once. But since I have everything set up, I'm gonna go ahead and set okay. And you can kind of see what happens here. So you can see it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It's summing up 
all of the gifts together, all of the um, groceries together, household, Macy's activities, and restaurants. Um, one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't um, bold the total amount, but you can see it says gifts total, $75. Groceries totals, um, $123.94 and then it has a grand total. So this is really nice um, for this exact reason. Imagine if you had thousands of lines and you needed to see how much your gifts totaled to. Um, this is just super convenient. You really could sort everything um, and then put in totals, but that would take forever if you have a lot of data. So again, I use this quite a bit at my job right now, um, and I usually work with at least a couple hundred rows, so it makes my life a lot easier. But just remember, if you're going to use this um, function in Excel, that you are making sure to sort first, because if you don't sort by what um, you want to subtotal by, it doesn't work. So just make keep that in mind. And once, if you, let's say you don't want the subtotals anymore, just click within the data, click on that subtotal again at the, um, let me see, where am I? Click on that subtotal again over there, and then you're just going to say remove all right here at the bottom. And you have all your data back the way that it was. Okay, so now that we have that, another thing that I want to do is I want, and I'm gonna take the filter out, I want to do a V lookup table. And again, this is probably more advanced that a lot of people don't know about. Um, but let's say I am going through my budget and um, I want to see items that, I want to compare items that I have budgeted versus what I haven't budgeted. And I know I could technically go through every single item and say, okay, did I, is this in my budget or is it not in my budget? But let's say, again, you have thousands of rows and you can't necessarily do that. That's where a VLOOKUP table um, comes in handy. Sorry about that. So again, I told you in the very beginning, I had two tabs here at the bottom, two Excel sheets. I have the data tab and then the VLOOKUP tab. So that's where we're going to kind of pull from. So right here at the top, you see budget. Um, and this is where I'm gonna put if an item was unbudgeted or budget, um, budgeted. Um, to do that, though, you have to, and I'm gonna kind of do it by category. So to do that, first you need to set up your VLOOKUP table um, tab. So if you click on that, you can see I have categories and then budgeted question mark. Um, and you can see the only thing I do not have budgeted is gifts. So what should happen is, once I do the VLOOKUP table, all of the gift items, so the top two, should come back unbudgeted and everything else should come back budgeted. Um, so how I'm gonna do that is I am going to do an equation. So, and I know this technically goes under the equations that I went over, but um, my dryer again. Okay, so to do that, you're going to type in equals VLOOKUP, parentheses, and it kind of tells you what you need to do. So you need to find the lookup value, which is going to be, oop, I'm just gonna select one, which is going to be my category. Then you need to tell it where the table is. So I'm gonna go and point it to the tab here. So, I am going to go ahead and select this. And then I'm going to select, I did a, um, not a period. I'm going to do a comma. And that's where I am going to, hopefully this is working because I feel like it's being weird up there. Then I'm gonna do two, I think is what I'm gonna do. And that says, doesn't work. So let's try three. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't want this formula builder. Equals V lookup. Lookup value is gifts.
You know what? I need to include. I need to include the the um, headers at the top. We are going to look up the look up column two. Okay, so you can see that it worked. Let's just fill it down. Um, to do that, I guess that's another thing that you have to know how to do for Excel. You're going to go ahead and you see that black box right at the bottom. You're gonna go ahead and double click that. And I know what I did wrong. Um, here at, when I found the table, I need to put dollar signs there so that it stays in place. If you do the dollar signs, it keeps it exactly where you put it. Otherwise, it moves it down um, to kind of make up for the fact that you're pulling it down to a, another row. So let's go ahead and move that down. And that's wrong as well. This should be... Let's see, let's sort this. Let's sort this, that might be the problem. Sort by category. Okay, let's see now. Now it works. So you can see the VLOOKUP is super sensitive to everything. So basically, you can use the formulas tab, but what I did is I just typed it in. Um, so what you need to do, and sorry that took me a while to figure it out, I do VLOOKUPs but not not a whole ton. I mean, I would say on a daily basis, I don't do them. Um, but what you want to do is you can kind of see here, you need to do equals V lookup. Then the B3 here is what you want to look up by. So gifts is what you want to look up by. Then you do a comma and you select the table. So when you select the table, again, I put it on a separate tab and you need to select this entire table here. So you're going to select everything, even the headers. Then you go back to the data tab um, and you need to do a comma and two. And that's because if you look back here at the VLOOKUP table, what you're looking up by is in the second column. So if you would have moved that, if you would have moved this over to the first column, you would have said one. So that's pretty much the basic basis of it. Um, I hope that makes sense. Really, I think you could use this for a lot of different reasons, but again, I just use it normally if there's something on a different spreadsheet that I need to kind of like get into a different spreadsheet, that's usually why I use it. So hopefully that wasn't confusing. Sometimes it just takes some playing with to get it to work right. But the main things that you need to worry about is making sure that you sort um, by what you're looking up and then make sure you have it in order again on the VLOOKUP table. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you guys is something that is extremely important for accounting. All the other things I showed you are important and you could definitely use them in accounting, but you could really use them for a lot of other things as well. But this specifically that I'm going to show you, the pivot tables, are really important for accountant and I, accounting and I use them all the time. So to do that, you're going to go ahead and select all the data again and you can include the budget budget. Um, whether it's budgeted or not budgeted, you're going to go to insert at the top and pivot table. And when you do that, you're going to get this little prompt box. Um, it just tells you that you're selecting this data and then it asks you, do you want it in a new worksheet? Do you want it um, in the exist existing worksheet or what? where do you want it? And so I'm going to just go with the new worksheet and what that's, what that's going to do is it's going to create a whole nother tab. So you saw at the bottom that I have the data tab and the VLOOKUP tab. When I say okay, it's gonna it's going to create a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And you can see at the bottom, there's a new sheet two. So I'm just gonna rename that. So what I did is I just right clicked on it, go to rename, and I'm gonna rename that pivot table. Just so you know, if you're trying to quickly get to it, what the name is. So now that you have that, you have this little field builder or this pivot table, pivot table builder. Um, and let's say, and this is really nice because it's very similar to 
sorting or filtering except for you can pull in a bunch of different things and all of that. So let's say that we want to have our date as a row and you can see as I pull things in from over here, it's creating this table over here. Let's say that we want to show the amount. So you're going to pull that into values. And let's say that we want to, let's say we also want to have <clears throat> the category by date. So as you can see on December 15th, we had, we purchased from two different categories, gifts and restaurants. And that totaled $90.24. Then on the 17th, all we bought was from the household category, and that was $15.71. And it goes on from there. So you can see it's a nice way to show data, either like combining it or separating it. It's just a really good tool for, tool for that. But another thing that you can do, let me zoom you guys out to show you guys this. You can add filters onto this table. So let's say I want to show whether items were budgeted or not budgeted. So right at the top here, you can see it's the same exact thing that I had before, except for right at the top here, it says budget and then all. And here is where I can select. I want to see only budgeted items. And you can see all of that is there. Or let's say I only want to see unbudgeted items. And that's where you see the gifts for $75. So pivot tables are really nice because it you can really um, change the date, not change the data, but play around with the data without having to like physically go into the data and sort things. Um, this, this like field um, or pivot table, table builder is really nice because you can move things around, you can add things. Another thing that you can do is instead of summing it, you could count how many, you can average it, you can min, you can max. Um, there's so many different I options with pivot tables and honestly, pivot tables are one of the number one things that accounting professions want their new hires to know. So pivot tables are extremely important. Um, if you didn't get anything out of this entire video, make sure that you kind of look into pivot tables. I would seriously just play around with data, just type some numbers and some stuff into Excel and just play with it because that's really how you're going to learn the most. But anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Again, if you have if you are interested in more, um, finding out more of what Excel does, let me know. I have a ton of different things that I can show you guys. Um, and just for the, you know, sake of time, I didn't show a ton. But let me know if there's anything specific you want me to show, and I would love to do another one of these videos. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.